You know, one of the weird things about becoming a pastor is people always ask, um, they always start asking me this question, what do we believe about this? Or what do we believe about this? And I'm like, I can tell you what I believe, but I, I, there's more to the we conversation than just me. Um, and that's true, not just in us having a conversation, but it's true about the church. This church is a we. And um, one of the things that you realize when you get involved in at Mountain View, for sure, is it's a different kind of church where we recognize that we don't all necessarily have to have uniformity in order to have unity. We may not even believe all the same things. Um, we may have different beliefs about a whole variety of topics and even in different interpretations about a variety of biblical things. Now, on the essentials, hopefully we're agreed. We stand by the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed. Um, we believe the Bible. But how do we know that we're in the right place and what kind of a church it is? That is um, where an interesting um, distinction really comes in that I, I think is really helpful. And so I always draw this, this picture for people. There's a sociologist named Peter Berger. This is the first place I heard this distinction. He says there's two ways that you can unite a group, not just church groups, but any kind of group. You unite it either by its boundary or by its center. All right, so in a bounded set group, it's kind of like a corral, and you know there's a boundary, and so you know when people are inside the boundary and when they're outside the boundary. So who's in and who's out? And the boundary can be anything from your doctrine, right? So a lot of churches will have a, a, a lengthy doctrinal statement, and you you know need to agree on all of their points of doctrine. Then you're in. Um, it could be your politics. In the last election cycle, a bunch of people really found it was really hard to be, well, they, they went to churches that were more bounded set with people that agreed with their, their politics because they wanted to be with like-minded people. It could be your ethnicity. See, our denomination that we're part of is called the Evangelical Covenant Church, and it started out being called the Swedish Mission Friends. Because it was a bunch of people that were friends that came over from from Sweden on mission together, and they're like, "Let's do this," you know. But as they grew and as they realized we want to reach more than just Swedish people, they changed the name to the Evangelical Covenant Church. And um, it, but but there are churches that are still bound by their ethnicity. They you know it's maybe it's because of language, because they're a certain immigrant group or whatever. But. Um, but that could be one of the things that, that makes you feel part of it. And then um, your doctrine, your politics, your ethnicity, or really your morality. You know, it's pretty classic for churches to have like, you know, kind of rules where it's like you don't drink, smoke, or chew, or go with girls who do. They're checking up on you and how much you drink or what you do or, you know, I don't know, whatever. Um, this is a useful tool if you want to uh, know who's in and who's out. And bounded set groups, are, a lot of your confessional churches, this is basically what the confessions are. They're a clear boundary about what Christians do and how Christians behave and what we believe about that. And if you're going to be one of us, then you go along with it. And it's, it's really useful and it's helpful. It's a discipleship tool. And some people do churches this way. We don't do it this way. We're actually more of a centered set church. And a centered set church is united because they define the center. And then anyone who's moving toward that center is welcome in the church. Now, it's a little bit messier because what you have is you have people over here on the left and people on the right that are both moving toward the center, toward Jesus anyway. And because um, Jesus is really, it's our center. That, that's, that's, you know, bottom line. The God that's revealed in Jesus and the Father, the Holy Spirit, we're, we're Trinitarian, but God has shown himself to us in Jesus. And the, the center of history, the center of the universe, the center of our faith is in Jesus uh, Christ as the perfect revelation of God, the Savior of the world. And we point to Jesus as that. And so you're going to have people in our church that have different morality than you, that have different ideas and doctrine than you different ethnicity than you, different politics than you. And no matter where we're at in this, because of our common love for Jesus, that's the thing that brings us together. And what, what 
our denomination and our church have done is to say, we're going to fight to keep the main thing the main thing. And we're not going to divide over other things. You know, one of the things that's interesting about our denomination is they, every other denomination that I know of is, is divided based on baptism. There are some that baptize as babies and they're not going to rebaptize you as an adult. There are some that are going to baptize as an adult, but they're going to dedicate you as a baby and they don't do baptism with a baby. The covenant says, look, we're, we're one family and we believe baptism is important, but how much water you use or when you do it is not the crucial issue. The unity of the church is more important than that. And so we fight to stay together uh, even when we disagree about important subjects. And that doesn't mean it's like a free-for-all with morality. We go back to the scripture and, the, and to Jesus and to say, what does he say about this? Uh, the big famous um, saying of the covenant is, where is it written? To, to go back to the scripture and say, where is it written? And let's talk about this together. Let's do this dialogue. Let's debate even if we debate. Um, those aren't bad things. They've become such hostile things in our culture. But the beautiful thing about our denomination and what we're trying to do in this church is that we, like I said, the church is a, a gym where we can love each other and practice. And we get to practice loving each other and loving people that are different than us. It's one of the things that I love about this church. But it's one of the things that will make it difficult for people that really like boxes. If you are a really black and white person, just know this is going to frustrate you. And um, if you know that and you're willing to grow in that area, then I think this will be a great church for you.